you can pick up these uh, sea foam sponges uh, pretty much at Michael's uh, dollar store or craft stores. Um, I like to buy the, the small bag that have multiple sizes. Let's cut them in different shapes. Uh, they're a little tough at first, but once you add them into water, they soften up. Uh, I just rip them apart into uh, different size pieces like this. And then I just get a small container uh, of water and then just put them in and they will soften up and they'll absorb all the water. And then just before I'm ready to use the actual sponge, I'll actually squeeze uh, majority of the water out. You still want to have a little bit of water in there. And the reason why I have them in different pieces is because I want to use different patterns. I don't want the same looking pattern in the same spots uh, throughout the bait. Uh, so if you're using this technique and you're using several different uh, um, colors, you don't have to worry about using the same one pattern. So I, they're, they're all nice and soft now. They're holding water. And that's what I'm going to do. It's just going to show you how I just do a, a quick little a sponge technique which is great for uh, different patterns uh, some effects of sometimes being able to do that pattern and work layers over it or do your layers first and add this last etc um, the first thing I'm going to do is just here's the bait that I've, I've pre the crankbait that I, I did a while ago uh, I've added some aluminum foil onto the side of the bait and then I painted the rest of the body the base coat with the white belly and the two colors I'm going to use for the sponge technique are just uh, brown and the black. You can use whatever color you want. Um, with these patterns, uh, because it goes on so light and I'm just barely touching the, the lure, which I'll explain uh, in a second, is I like to use the opaques um, in the thicker uh, mix. I don't reduce or thin them out uh, that often. Just because I notice that if I put them on too thin, it looks really good, but when I start brushing the epoxy or resin on, uh, it smudges them sometimes because they're too thin. So I'll go with a little bit of a thicker paint just to kind of um, allow the, the paint to get a good dry and a good base and a pattern. And I'll do the brown first and then the black. And you can use transparent, opaques, whatever you wish. All I'm doing is I'm just going to put a, a, a few drops of this, uh, usually on a container, but I'm just going to use a little piece of aluminum foil. Uh, let me see here. <sighs> kind of like what I've done before. Just a little bit of aluminum foil, a couple drops of water to thin it out if you feel like you need to. But this stuff is pretty thin. So that's all I've done is I just added the brown. And then what I want to do, or what you might want to do, is with the brown or whatever color you wish, pick a part of the foam that's going to best give you the pattern that you're looking for. And instead of just dabbing this directly um, onto the lure as that, I like to kind of get a test sample and try to get rid of the excess amount. So if it's too runny or too thick, you know ahead of time. And all I'm doing is I'm really not squishing, the, I'm not pushing too hard, I'm just barely touching it like this. Just enough to give it a pattern like that. If you press too hard, sometimes you get more of a browner spot than a pattern. If that's the effect you're going for, that'd be all right, but uh, it's just not what I'm doing. So you can put you can put this on really thick or really thin, uh, depending on the pattern. You can do a light pattern or a heavy pattern. Um, one of the things I like to do is because I'm doing multiple pattern, or sorry, um, multiple colors with the same pattern, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the brown I'm going to turn it sideways if I can. Uh, maybe not. I'll put it sideways like that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just barely touching the lure. You can add some along the back, the spine. It's up to you depending on your bait. And I like to turn my body around and my sponge a little bit as I go. So again, I don't get the same repeat pattern. And like I said, you can do this as heavy or as soft as you wish. I don't usually do the bottom. Uh, once you're done with it, I just kind of throw it back into the water. I'm going to heat sink this quickly without blowing all of my aluminum foil on that everywhere.
And you find that if you add too much water, you find that if you add too much water to this powder and as you use your blow dryer or whatever you're using as a heat source, you'll sometimes find that the water will spread or push out, uh, kind of like putting uh, a drop of water onto a surface and blowing it through a straw. It does that little sneaky pattern. I've done that before. It's a pretty cool effect. Um, if it's really watery like this though, um, sorry, which it kind of is right now for me, I don't want to use too much air to blow dry it, but I just want a little bit of the heat. So I'm just going to heat dry this just enough to where um, I know that when I can flip it around and add my other colors, this is not going to still um, lift and add to the next color I want. So I just put a little bit of uh, low pressure heat on it and then once I saw that it was drying up a little bit I just put it on higher air pressure and uh, heat dried it quicker. Now I've put the original one in the little cup of water. I'm going to grab another one. I'm going to fold the black, the aluminum foil out of the way. I'm going to add my next color which is just an opaque black doesn't have an R on the top so it's not reduced. Just a few drops is pretty good with this stuff. And if you need to add water I usually just uh, add a couple drops with my finger just add it onto it like that. You'll see that there's some water on the tip of my finger because if it's, if it's reduced too much reduce too much and then you have to add more paint. What I'm doing is I'm just spreading the paint around a little bit so when I add my foam, when I add my foam to it it's not just there or here. I want a good and that's it and like I said before I actually start touching the bait I just want to make sure I have enough paint on there which I do. And I'm just gingerly touching. The bait. And by using different parts of your sponge, and depending on how much pressure you put, you can add more or little as you want. Now that I'm done with this, I'm just going to put it back into the water, heat dry this again, starting off with low, low heat and then adding more to it. And as this dries, it kind of changes a little color when it's too thin. Sometimes you get that transparent look with the sharp edges.
those are the two colors that I've used which are done. I don't need any more pieces of foam. Move all the stuff out of the way. So you can see how thin my black was. I reduced it pretty, pretty thin. And because it was reduced really thin, I didn't have to add water to it. Well, I didn't reduce it. It was uh, pretty thin to begin with. You can see how, I don't know how well it picks up on the camera, but you can see how sometimes the black or certain patterns, you'll see a little bit of a darker line around it and very thin, transparent. It's another neat little effect. I'm going to add the eyes quickly. Oh, before I do that, my bad. You use the same black. I'm just going to add a little bit of black around the eyes and the back. Get my air pressure. So there's a little bit of black around the eye. Now, if this is too bright, you can always add your black over the, the lure very lightly and then take some of that brightness away if you add that uh, you add too much color in the back. So I always start off with a darker back. So that's the back and then what I've done is I've just kind of let some of the black go down the side but I don't want to take too much of the background away and I don't want to add uh, uh, too much of a shadow effect so I just kind of went heavier on the on the back of the lure with a little bit of an overspray on the side but when I go sideways like this onto the lure I'm just kind of spreading out a little bit of that maybe a sharp edge that I have. There we go. And if you can see it well. So there's the pattern. put on it. Now this color, the original color that I put on it actually dampened a lot of the reflective aluminum. But that aluminum through the transparent paint gives a little bit of that shine to it. And I'll show you some of the other videos uh, on how to do this later. Alright, and this one's pretty much done except for adding a couple drops of glue in each socket for the eye. I move the eye around just to kind of make sure it's got a good seal around it. And then as it dries, it becomes a little harder to move. And then I know that when I flip it over, it's not just going to fall out on me.
that is it. And that is it. Now, this is time to take off the, uh... Now, you could paint the back of the lure like that, too. Usually I do. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Just happen to forget about doing it now. Like, yeah, I'm not worrying about it. Yeah, I got a hole in my system. Just gotta let this sit for a day or so, and then when I have uh, enough small batch of lures, I'll epoxy this when I do a smaller batch. And that's uh, that's how I do the sponge. Thanks for watching. Bye.